morning, everyone. This is George from Apex. We're happy to have you join us today for our monthly productivity webinar. Today, we'll be talking about uh, communication using Skype for business. This is something uh, many of our clients and prospects have or uh, will have as part of their Office 365. Had a lot of requests to do a webinar on it to uh, give you the highlights of what will be uh, a nice capability if you implement it in your organization. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And today, if you have questions, as usual, there's a question and answer box. You can type in anything you want to ask, and we'll catch those at the end. Also, we will actually have a live demo of Skype for Business and bring in a person or two from Apex, and that poses some technical challenges because we have two microphones going, one for the go to webinar that you're hearing me on now and one for Skype, but we'll probably just mute the people on Skype so you may not actually hear what they're saying, but that's just because we have conflicting microphones going on with this uh, webinar. Anyway, real quick uh, about Apex, most of you already know about us. We're uh, headquartered in Reading. We have clients throughout the state, provide IT managed services. Uh, a little over 30 employees now with lots of industry certifications from those great partners you can see at the bottom. We provide, as I mentioned, managed services. So many of our organizations have outsourced their IT completely to Apex, or in some cases, we have clients with a small IT staff that we supplement and add our strengths to their existing team. And we handle the uh, ongoing uh, monitoring and patching, backup and disaster recovery, just making sure their environments get and stay safe, secure, and stable. We have a fully staffed help desk in Reading that answers calls throughout the day. We have a professional services team that can provide project assistance to your team and uh, implement new technology, including Skype for Business. And then uh, a whole suite of cloud hosting options to help you determine what makes sense to move to the cloud for your organization. Okay, so as I mentioned today, we're going to be talking about Skype for Business. Uh, many of you may already have it and not be using it if you subscribe to many of the Office 365 plans this comes along with it, especially the business plans. If you have email only through Office 365, you may not have it, but for a dollar more per month, you can add it. And it's uh, something that we use heavily within Apex to communicate with our staff directly, both uh, just instant messaging and also uh, voice and video calls. We also hold some team meetings using Skype for Business with video and uh, multimedia added in. And then we can actually bring in our clients into chat sessions or meetings if they have Skype for Business deployed as well. So it's an internal and external communication technology. And today, Melanie is going to take over and give us a good rundown on how to communicate with Skype for Business. Okay, Melanie. Thanks, George. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us for this month's webinar. As George mentioned, um, today we're doing Skype for business. Now, you probably are familiar with the term Skype. It's it's an application that's existed for, for many years. But the thing is, is most people are familiar with it as just a sort of regular app used by regular consumers uh, for either video, audio, and also instant messaging. Now, what's interesting is that basically Microsoft bought Skype uh, and started to make changes to it and eventually integrate it as part of its Office 365 product, and hence Skype for Business was born. Now, it's the biggest question people often ask is like, what's the difference between the regular Skype that they might have used and Skype for Business, and are the two interchangeable? First question is, yes, they're very different. Uh, even though you can tell as, as we're gonna go through it and you have if you have used regular Skype, you'll see as we go through Skype for Business, there are a lot of very familiar elements that are from Skype, but you can definitely see that Microsoft has taken the elements of Skype and amped it up significantly more for a business environment. And they definitely have done a lot to sort of find ways to integrate this tool, this communication tool with its other products like Office products like PowerPoint, Excel, et cetera. So, and, and OneNote, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And, and so because of, they're targeting different audiences, regular Skype is just for the regular sort of person, individual calls, that kind of thing. Whereas Skype for Business is really more, and you can do individual, but it's also has enough strength and capabilities to handle smaller to larger groups. So, you know, it could handle a meeting of 10, 15 people, again, all depending on your, your internet capabilities and bandwidth, but, but definitely has sort of capability 
ability to do that. And as I mentioned, there's a lot more features uh, in the business Skype for Business for presentations and whiteboarding and that kind of stuff, which we're going to get into. And as I mentioned, yes, obviously Skype for Business is integrated with Office 365. So we're going to just walk through a little bit in the presentation first, a little bit about Skype for Business, and then I'll jump over into Skype for Business itself and show you a demo of how this all works. So within Skype for Business, we have three ways to communicate. Instant messaging, uh, so like texting almost, uh, voice and video calling, and as well as scheduling like online meetings, which could combine voice, video, and instant messaging. So let's get into a little bit about that. So when you open up, once you need to install uh, Skype for Business on your on your desktop, and then once you you log into it, uh, this interface will appear. And we basically have sort of, and we're going to take a little tour of the interface. But I wanted to just show you that we have basically sort of a main area of the interface. We have contacts, the icon for contacts, conversations. Uh, this little icon is like a keypad for audio dialing, but that may be a feature that you may or may not have depending on your uh, version of Skype for Business. And this is the meetings view. So pretty simple. And as you, depending on which of these you have clicked, your functionality will sort of change uh, accordingly. And then we also have a little sort of drop down area here for settings, which allows lots of sort of customization in terms of, you know, your audio, your video, putting your photograph in and that kind of stuff. I also want, we're going to go through a tour and show you that right at the top of the interface, there's an area where you can basically customize who you are. So you can set up your profile photo, you can set up your status, so you can decide, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm available, you can talk to me, or no, please, I'm working right now, don't bother me, or I'm away from my desk. What's also cool, and we'll talk a little bit later about this, is the fact that this gets, Skype for Business gets integrated with Microsoft Outlook. So you can have your calendar from Microsoft Outlook connect connected in. So when you go into a meeting, it will automatically change your status in Skype for Business to busy because you're in a meeting. So you don't have to physically actually do that, which is really great. You also have the ability to, and you can't really see it here, but I'll show you after the ability to customize like where you're working from. So say you're working from home or you're working at a certain conference room, you can actually set that so people can find you. And then there's a great little area at the top in terms of like, you could really set it to whatever you want. What's happening today? Some people use it to you use a quote for the day. Some people use it to send sort of their daily message, lots of stuff. So uh, lots of opportunities there to sort of customize yourself within Skype. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the contacts itself. So as we mentioned, when you click on this particular icon for contacts, you're going to be able to down in the area below search for anybody within your contacts as well as the full Skype like the regular not Skype for business the regular Skype directory you can search for people by name by their Skype name by their phone number by email addresses and I'll show you it's very easy you start typing a few were a few letters and it just starts guessing what you think you might want so that you actually don't have to type in the full uh, address per se and as I mentioned, there is that opportunity to go in and we're not going to dive too, too much into the options, but I'm going to show you a little bit of what's available. And I do recommend when you have an opportunity to go in for Skype for Business to spend a little time in the customization area because you, you can really make some decisions on, you know, what, how it opens up, what it kind of looks like in terms of when people email or uh, text you, does it interrupt you, does it not? Uh, things like that I think is a great, and again, like I said, we're not going to go into it as much today, but I think it's a good opportunity to make this tool work for you. And then we're going to jump into instant messaging. But before that, let's go over to the actual tool itself to, uh, to take a look at Skype and do a little tour. So I'm going to just minimize this my PowerPoint and all these other tools just so that we can look at the Skype interface all by itself. So as I mentioned that we have the contacts area, a conversations area, a keypad, and this only really works if you have audio, sort of a voice pad or something connected up with your telephony. But also, if someone sends you a voicemail within Skype, which they can do that, they will show up here under this keypad area, which is neat. And then you also will have your meeting area. And this will, again, connect it up with your Outlook, and they'll show you here. So these are my meetings that I've set up today. And if it is a Skype meeting, you'll see that it will actually say Skype meeting, and I can one click join the meeting, which is really great and efficient. Let me go back here to the contacts area. As I mentioned before, you can look at your contacts based on the groups, 
you can look based on the status. So you'll see beside each of my contacts here what they're at, what what they're currently doing. They're in a meeting, so they're red, meaning they're busy. They're available. You might even see that they're inactive, so they're not around. So we don't know whether they're available or not. That type of stuff. You can also, and again, so you can look at it based on groups. So you have the opportunity. You automatically get favorites and other contacts but you can also go in and start to customize and create other groups so I want to create a new group and in my group we're going to call this the marketing department so I can either add people to the group if I find somebody find somebody from it and I could just drag and drop them and add them to my list under marketing department or I'm just going to delete that person's name so I see if per se in my group here I decide that oh okay Tiffany is my favorite but I also want to put her under my marketing department group I can drag and drop her under that department as well and the reason that's important is again when you only have like 10 or 5 contacts in your list not a big deal at all but potentially if you have you know 50 different contacts in your Skype for Business, having ways to either group it, and what's nice is here you can actually reduce them down. So again, if, again, if you had 50 different, 50 different contacts within Skype for Business, you could sort of divide it up and minimize it based on who you're looking for. I also love the fact that if you're just looking for someone who's online, you can see, okay, these are all the people that are online. These are all the people that are away. I also like the fact that you can decide whether you're looking at somebody based on their relationship. So you can have personal people potentially. Now, again, they may not have Skype for business because again, it's sort of linked to Office 365 and stuff, but potentially they may. And so you could have them under friends and family. You could have different work groups. And then in this case, we have other contacts. And we also have the opportunity to have external contacts. So people who are not part of Skype for Business, uh, but may have regular Skype, and, and they could use the Skype interface, uh, web-based interface to communicate with you. And Melanie, one other thing here that's really handy with the groups is you could actually start a chat with the entire group in one shot. So many times if I'm out traveling out of the office and I need, uh, you know, we're ready to close a deal out in the field and I need something from my team back at Apex, I can just open up a group chat for my whole team and whoever uh, can jump on it first will get me the information that I need. So it's real easy once you have groups to have multiple people uh, in the chat. You don't have to open them up and add them one by one. Great. Thanks for bringing that in. That's a great additional feature. Yeah, so that's the contacts area. Then talking about conversation. So what's great is the fact that this basically shows you under, when I click on it, it tells me I'm in this area, but I basically have three sort of sub areas. I have all, missed, and calls. So under all, it will basically give me all my previous conversations. What's great is it will actually also tell me what they are. So we have video calls. We have actually message calls from inside of a meeting. We have phone calls that happened, and we can even go in a presentation that we shared. So what's great about this, I can actually click in and take a look at that conversation. So you know how a lot of times people have emails and you're scrolling back and what did I talk about? I love this feature that, you know, you could go back a particular text. A lot of people save texts from like years and years, a big uh, list of them. And I love the fact that here, you know, you have a sort of list of them and you could go in and potentially look for a conversation that you start. And maybe there was a document in there that you forgot to download, that kind of stuff. I also like the fact that you could, this will show you all of them, but if particular you're looking for phone calls, there is a, an option here to go to calls. And then you can just see what actual phone calls that took place. And I also like the fact that if there were any missed calls, people trying to contact you and you weren't, partic you weren't at your desk or you weren't available, that it will actually log it there for you. And we're going to talk again more about Outlook and the integration of Skype for Business with it. But I, like I said, this whole, this area right here with the meetings area is wonderful for the fact that one click you can quickly go to a meeting or just say you're having right now with your team. Okay, let's jump on a call and have a meeting. You can, you don't have to go and book a meeting in the conference line and stuff. You can one click start a meeting and start inviting participants to it, which we are going to do in just a minute. I'm just going to jump right here to show the menu, as I mentioned. 
So if you click on the drop down, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different options for file. Like I said, you can meet now. I'm just going to cancel that for now. We have the tools area, and we're going to talk a little bit about these tools, but I want to bring your attention to an area here called options. When you open it up, there'll be a pop-up box that basically gives you a whole bunch of different options that you can go in. You can customize your photograph, you can talk about how you want your instant messages to appear, you can set your sound of your microphone if it's too loud, you can set your video device, all that kind of stuff. So I love the fact that you kind of do that all in advance and get that all set up. I also, another feature that I I've sort of figured out after the fact, because I like the fact that these tools are up here. I go, call me classical. <laughs> I like the fact that these, I like having my files at the top and having drop down menus at the top just from so many, so many other applications. That's how they're sort of structured and navigate and I'm just used to it. So you actually can do that. So I actually, there's an option here to show menu bar. If I unclick it, you'll notice that that thing at the top goes away. I actually set it that way because I like having these options at the top. I Again, they're all exactly the same options as here. I just prefer to have them up here at the top. Let's talk a little bit about this personal area and then we'll jump into what you can actually do with Skype for Business. So as I mentioned, you can go in and change your photo. I can make decisions on whether I'm away or whether I'm at my desk. I can also decide whether I sign out of Skype for Business, which will mean that I'm basically has no status because I'm not online at all. And But if you exit, keep in mind that you're not actually logging out of Skype. You are just minimizing it into the little Dropbox at the bottom. As I mentioned, we have an area here that you can put whatever that I am working from the conference room. And we also have an area, as I mentioned, at the top that you can, whatever we could put today is Thursday sales message and you could do your quote blah 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 so great opportunity to sort of customize that and then yeah as you look at your at your the rest of the people on your team then you'll be able to see that what their status is they have the same thing so you'll see here dan dan's status is what if soy milk is just regular milk so you know you could be funny and make things entertaining with your with your staff and stuff so Great, I'm gonna jump back to the presentation, instant messages. So as I mentioned, there's three different ways to communicate. There's instant messaging, there's voice and audio or voice calls, and then there's video calls. And there's also meetings, but we'll talk a little bit about that the separate. What's neat about the fact is when you start an instant message with someone, you actually can quickly seamlessly go from uh, instant message, a voice chat to a video call. It can, you know, it doesn't have to, be all pre-planned it can be very spontaneous so let's show you how that can all happen and so we have george on the line so we're just gonna again i'm gonna minimize this presentation just so we have this all under black screen and i'm gonna go here to george and i'm just going to now you have different options to communicate with people you can go over here to their profile and you can move over and send an im message what i think is just great you just double click and that will open up basically a meeting that I can start talking with them. And so, hey, George. Oops, it'd be help if I could spell your name. Hey, George. So I'm sending him a message. And then he's gonna respond and you're gonna see, I'm gonna get a little notification. If I had my presentation, say I was working on stuff and I just, while I was waiting for him to respond, I could be doing my business and then eventually I will get a notification. Great, Let's hello, go. wonderful. All right, so we're gonna just move this over here and I'm gonna just bring up our little interface here. Okay, great. So say we're having a conversation and we changed it. Uh, now, the only thing we have to just keep in mind is my, I have to mute my microphone because or else we're going to have a crazy feedback loop. But so say George and I are having this IM conversation about marketing and we're like, okay, you know what? This is getting crazy. Let's just talk about it. So I'm going to call him and I'm going to Skype call him. And I'm going to just mute myself for the sake of this. And I'm actually going to. All right. He's echoing, so he's going to mute himself as well for the purpose of this call. But we would basically now be able to have a conversation. Now, say we wanted to change that and we wanted to ch go to video. Great, we're going to change it from a voice call to a video call. 
but I'm not going to do a camera. So I'm going to ask George. George, can you turn on your video camera? Certainly. Coming through. Great. And there you see George. Good morning. Hi, everybody. So, and what's great, what you saw me do here is as soon as there's a little icon here in the top corner that allows you, when you close on it, it'll close it up. There we go. So here we have the participants. All I did was I clicked on this little icon that closes that area up or opens it up and you'll see who your participants are on the call. And you also have the opportunity to invite more people. Just as a little tip as well, sometimes when you're in this, this meeting, I am sort of window, sometimes things get closed up. For example, this conversation where your texting area can get closed up, no problem. There's an icon here in the, uh, the bottom left corner. And if you click on it, it will just open up your, your text messaging area. So you'll see we have participants, we have texting, and then we have our main sort of conversation area. And this is also our area where when we get into different, we'll talk about a little later, different ways that you can share your desktop, share presentations, and basically take your meeting to the next level. As part of this though, I just wanna show the, the ability to add additional people and what that kind of looks like in terms of managing these conversations. So I'm going to invite more people and we are going to invite Tom. Even though Tom's in a meeting, I'm gonna invite him anyways. And it's just taking a bit. Oh, and he's joined us. Just gonna take a bit for everything to sort of show up. And I'm just gonna open this up. Okay, here's Tom, he's just loading up. I'm gonna close out this conversation area just so you can see a bit better. It's just taking Tom a little while. I think he was in our, we did a little practice session before we started. So I think he was in our previous meeting. So he's probably getting, he has to delete out of one meeting and come into this meeting, but he's just loading up right now. So I wanted to show you as well, like right now, George and I are both presenters, but if there it is. So Tom right now is just in audio mode, but he's muted because we didn't want to, again, to cause the feedback loop, but we're gonna ask Tom to turn on his video if he could. Now, I also want to show the fact that you can, you can't do it when people, you're all presenters, but if you end up inviting people as participants, you can control their actions. So you can mute the audience. You can say, okay, all attendees, no video. So say you were going into a time of your presentation and you just wanted people to focus on the screen on your actual PowerPoint. Um, you could go here and click no attendee video and that basically shuts everybody and attendees down. I like the fact that you can, oh, here we go. Tom, oh, he's just messaging him, telling him to start his video. You can also yep. hide the names and you can also invite people as well. So I love the fact that there's these basically web conferencing tools that really help you take basically a meeting to the next level. We don't know if, if Tom's gonna turn on his, but what's say for example someone joins your meeting right and you know tom and we all have a conversation and then we're like hey tom you know that's been great thanks tom so tom's messaging us and the reason the way i see that is i by clicking this part open i can see they're now having a typing an im conversation so again all yeah. these things can be happening at the same time you can be having a video call uh messaging what's also cool too is say i wanted to send just tom a message by himself I can double, oh, there's Tom. I can double click on Tom's face <coughs> and just conversate, have a conversation with him. So it's a and great feature. Say I wanted to just, you know, have a little separate sidebar with Tom, like, hey, Tom, like, uh, please show your, your, your video. I could have, like in this case, George decided to type it in the meeting. He could have gone and just typed it to him individually, that kind of thing. So there's, oh, there he is. So there's, I also want to show you as this is coming up that as messages come up and you're busy with something else, they show up on your screen on the, now again, you can set this with your settings, but I actually like the fact that it can actually set up in the bottom and you can decide. I actually can reply or say I'm busy. I, I'm in a meeting. I can't talk to you right now. I'm going to ignore and it, it's there. And then as I showed you before, if you go to your conversations area of Skype for Business, I can pick up this conversation with Tom after the meeting. Okay, right, so now say for example, you know, we've talked with Tom, we got his feedback and we're like, hey, you know, that's great, Tom. 
you can leave now. <laughs> so people can, you can wait for people. You know how you're always in conference calls and then there's that person that you ask to leave and you just don't know if they've actually left the audio part and they're not still there listening. So I love the fact that here you can actually see if someone's still on the line. You can actually, you know, mute them if they're, again, if they're a participant or that if you're, if they're a participant and you're the presenter. But I also love the fact you can just remove someone from a meeting. So sorry, Tom. Love you. Bye. <laughs> All right, Tom has left the meeting. <laughs> so great opportunities to con you know, have control. You, like I said, you can minimize stuff, turn people on, turn people off. And I just love the fact that you have all this sort of control at your fingertips. Now for this instance, I'm just gonna close down this call with George, bye George. And I'm gonna just press the bye. hang up button. And what you'll see there is it shuts everything down. Now what's nice though, is it also captures what just happened. So we have the text that happened all the conversation that we did in the IM portion. And, but it also leaves, uh, it lets me know that there, I could rejoin the meeting. So I actually left the call. If George stayed there on the call with Tom, I could then rejoin the same meeting just by clicking this button. Or say, for example, I have a new number, I could actually type that in there. So it's a great feature. I love the fact that it kind of captures that all for you. And as I mentioned, I'm just gonna close this, but as I saw, I'm gonna go here to conversations and you'll see here, here's that conversation, the video call that we had with George and Tom. And if I click into that, you'll see that here's the stuff that we were talking about before. Oh, a little bit further up. Here's the call from George. See, and there's our conversation material there. So again, great way to sort of jump in. If you forgot stuff, you don't gotta make notes of it. It's all there. You just gotta go back to it. It's great features. All right, let's jump back in here. And we talked a little bit about the video calls. Oh, I did want to mention, sorry, I just had an opportunity, voice calls. Okay, and then we'll talk about meetings. All right, before we talk about meetings and such, I just want to go back to the George call. And sorry, we're just going to call George again. He's on, <laughs> he's on multiple, he's yeah. on multiple microphones. That's okay. So I'll, that's okay, I'll just, I'm going to hang up on you for a second. Okay, no problem. Let's call Tom. Should we call Tom? Sure. There's Tom, let's call Tom. Hi, Tom. Oh, I'm gonna mute this so I don't echo. Okay, hi. Uh, and I just wanna show that you have also the ability to do some call controls on your own. So say for example, I'm having a voice conversation with, yes, uh, oh, Yes, I can. I can actually type because he's on my mute. I'm going to say yes, I can hear you. See, I love the fact, again, it's all seamless. You know, it's a voice call. It's an IM message. It's all happening at the same time. And you guys on the call can't hear him because his mic is not piped through the go to meeting. Right. So Thank just you. Melanie can hear him. Thanks for clarifying. So. I'm talking to Tom. We're having a conversation and then all of a sudden I'm like, hey, you know what? Can I just put you on mute for a second? So I can actually put the call on hold, right? Say I have to go run to the washroom or whatever, I can put him on hold so that he's not listening to whatever background stuff that's going on, or if there's a dog barking in the background, that type of thing. So then I can resume the call. I also have the ability to, to change the, my volume as well, which is handy. And I can also have some control of my devices. So say I had multiple, in this case, you have multiple microphones, say you have multiple webcams. So say you have a webcam on your laptop, another, an external webcam. You have the ability to kind of pick and choose your devices from this icon right here in the interface, which is helpful. And now we're gonna go talk a little bit more about meetings and stuff, but I did wanna talk a little bit about the fact that whether it's a meeting or just a conversation, I can start recording this conversation. Now, again, if it's a, just a voice call, what will happen is it will record this screen and it will record just the audio. If it record, if we're typing and talking, it will record all of it. So basically it records anything kind of happening on the screen. And we'll talk a little bit after about how you then get to, once you've done recording it, I'm gonna say start recording. The recording has started. You'll see it's up here at the top, right? And then if I wanna stop it, I'm going to stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop the recording. There we go. 
And then I can actually go here to my manage recordings. And then you'll see that this is my recording and I can access it, play it, and I can have multiple, you know, meetings and go back. And if so, if you're the type of person that likes reference or there's a complex conversation and you're like, hey, why am I typing this all out? Let's just record it. This is a great opportunity, again, to save a lot of typing and work. Recording manager, let's close out of that. We're done that. All right, so thanks, Tom. I'm gonna hang up on Tom. Bye. And again, you see it captures that information, last message received, and I'm just gonna close out of that. Wonderful. So let's just talk a little bit about the meetings opportunities, and then I'll show you a demo of how that works. So within Outlook itself, once the two are integrated, you will have an icon that will say join Skype meeting. So what this allows you to do is as you're setting up your meetings in Outlook calendar, if you choose join Skype meeting, it just it sets up all the info for you, the links, the click it, click dial in type stuff. It's all there. So your participants they don't have to dial anything. They just have to click on that link and jump into the meeting. And again, depending on their capabilities, whether they have video or audio, you can deal with all of that once they click on the actual uh, link itself. Now, if they're not from your within your organization and don't have Skype for Business, they can still join your meeting using a Skype for Business web app. Now, it doesn't have all the same features and opportunities, obviously, as Skype for Business within this application, but it does allow people who don't have Skype for Business, so say you have a client that doesn't, it still allows them the opportunity to dial in and join and listen in to what you're talking about. So we talked to, we're going to talk a little bit about the web-based client afterwards. So once you've actually started your meeting, what I love, or scheduled your meeting, I love about Skype is the fact, Skype for Business, is they've, and even actually a lot of web conferencing tools don't have this, which I... I I kind of wonder is the opportunity to kind of prep for your meeting in advance. So say you're having, you know, a, an intense, you know, planning session with your team, you know, instead of spending all this time uploading at the moment, like, oh, let's share this file. Oh, let's share this presentation. You could, you know, plan your meeting in advance and think it all out and have all your material all uploaded in advance so you could even have like a poll set up so say you know that after you do your your presentation you know that you want to ask your participants their feedback or you want to ask them what the next steps are you can set that all up and I'll, I'll show you how that works and I, I love that opportunity to do that we talked a little bit about the fact that yes you can manage and we won't go so much into this because we just covered this the fact that you can manage your participants so that you can have many people, like in this instance, we just practice with two, but as, as much as your internet bandwidth can handle, you know, you can have many, many video and audio participants. And they, what's great is, again, you can control what they see, what they're doing, what they're texting. And I also like the fact that, uh, you know, if you want to see them when they're talking, it just adds a lot of more interactivity and engagement versus just audio. And we're going to show you a, a lot more features that just add to the functionality of your meeting. I Now, most web conferencing tools have this functionality, the ability to share your screen or your desktop. I also love the fact that Skype for Business allows you to choose what screen. So you're not, if say you don't want to show your whole desktop, you just want to show an element of your desktop, you could choose that. As I mentioned at the beginning, I think the biggest sort of feature that that Microsoft has brought to the table with Skype for Business, it's the, it's the integration with Office tools. So you'll see that with the ability to co-author documents, so Word documents, PowerPoint documents. The fact that, because a lot of other web conferencing tools, even like what we're using right now for this webinar today, when I'm showing you my presentation today, I'm actually showing it to you like as a whole desktop, right? And so you'll see when I get out of it, you actually see PowerPoint, me minimizing out of it and such. What I love about the fact that Skype for Business is again, they own PowerPoint, so they can do this. They've integrated it. So you can upload a presentation to present as a presentation. So it has that forward click through type of functionality. It, it presents like in the screen like it. And I'll show that to you in just a sec. And if you caught our webinar last month, we covered OneNote, which is a great note taking tool from Microsoft. And great, they've integrated it with Outlook and they've also integrated it with Skype for Business. So while you're doing a meeting, you can one click sort of go in, create notes, and it will actually cut and paste your details from the meeting, Skype meeting, into your notes in OneNote. So we'll show you that as well. And as I mentioned, there are some sort of features. That, again, you can do it in advance or you can do it live in the moment is the ability to do a whiteboard. So say, you know, you're with a team and you have 
like a stylus and you want to sort of draw a picture, you can, there's a, a live whiteboard. There's also ability to poll. So like you in advance or in the moment, you can set up poll questions and ask the, ask people what they think about something. And there's also a Q and A. We're not going to go into this too much because it sort of shuts down elements of the instant messenger and closes stuff off. But say you were running a sort of big web conference with clients or a training type of situation, or you had a guest speaker, a Q&A basically allows all the participants, it kind of changes the screen into a, like a clear screen and allows the participants to ask questions. And they kind of pop up on the screen and then it allows the guest speaker to respond. And then the responses sort of pop up on the screen. So basically it's like a typed Q&A session versus a talking one. You know, I could see value in that, I guess, the typing element versus I don't know why you wouldn't just talk it out, but I guess there's also the opportunity afterwards is because this is all saved that you could then, you know, cut and paste all this information for reference after the fact. And I'll show this a little bit afterwards. So there isn't a direct Skype for Business app for your phone. It's actually called Link, uh, Microsoft Link, uh, but it basically is Skype for Business. <laughs> uh, and but I, I have no idea why they don't call it they don't call it sky for business. The, Melanie, the uh, actual product used to be called Link and they renamed it to Skype for Business. So they just haven't oh, fully okay. caught up on the mobile apps, but eventually it will. But Link is the same as Skype for Business now. Okay. So for now, though, they're the two, they're, two, they're one and the same. Yeah. So for now, though, when you go to for apps, you're going to have to not type in Skype for Business. You have to type in Link and follow its pretty simple steps that it walk you through what based on, again, your uh, Office 365 login information. And if you've set everything up on your computer and then you go to your phone and just set up all your, your login information, it will sync all the information together. So let's show you how that all works. So again, I'm gonna minimize this just so that we're happening on a, a black screen here. And I'm gonna open up my Outlook and I'm just gonna go into a meeting and I'm going to just start to schedule a meeting. And we're going to say this is the marketing planning meeting. And you'll see here, as I mentioned, you have now a Skype meeting. So we could put in the agenda and all that kind of information. And then once I click on the Skype meeting, you'll see it automatically generates a link. And then when I send it to whoever, so I'm sending it to George, when he receives it, whatever the meeting notices, he will now have this link. So when the meeting happens, all he has to do is click on this link in order to access the Skype meeting. So I'm sorry, George, I'm gonna send this to you now. So now it's here in that, which is great. I'm gonna just minimize this. So, and as I mentioned, any of the meetings that you've scheduled will show up and you'll see here, if it is has a Skype meeting component, you'll see it here in your meeting section of your interface. This is Outlook telling me that it's delivered the message to, to George. So, and you'll see here that anything that was a Skype meeting has a one click to join the meeting, which is great. And I, and here's the other one, the one that I just scheduled. And I'm just gonna click and connect up into the meeting and say yes. Now, before our actual meeting starts, because we're a little ahead of our meeting, oh, George just read our, our message. Okay, so, before George joins our meeting, I want to do a little bit of prep work. So I am going to upload some documents in advance. So I want to, first I want to have some attachments. So say for example, I, you know, want to, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to, I don't know, send a, a PowerPoint sample document of some sort, some bios, okay? And it's uploading the bios. Great, and close that. And then I'm going to upload another PowerPoint file. This is just like a template. And we're uploading that. Now, so this is because it's a presentation, you'll see that it's actually like embedded in there. And what's nice is I can actually click through and any animation that's in there as part of the presentation, it will actually present it that way. Now, what I love the, the fact about Skype for Business is the fact that you can, like I said, you can upload all this stuff in advance and manage it during your meeting. So here, remember, I've actually uploaded two files. So when I go to this little icon here and open it up, you'll see there's an option to manage content. 
This will open up a little interface, which is just brilliant for managing during a meeting situation, all your content. And it literally is all of it. So the, in, this, in this interface, you will see if you created any polls, if you've uploaded any other attachments like videos, Word documents, that kind of stuff, and any, and any presentations, it will actually put it all like this. So what I love the fact is that you can, say you have multiple stuff happening, you can decide what shows at what time. So right now, this is the one being now showing, but say I don't want this one, I want this one to be the one showing. Open. Oh, this one's actually gonna open the file. No, I don't wanna open the file. I want to actually show the file. I want to close this one, not showing, not showing. Oh, for some odd reason, I don't know why it's upload. Maybe it was because of the format of my bios. Not really sure why, but the presentable content, let me try opening up another one here. Add, share, oh, maybe because I upload it as an attachment. I'm sorry, that was my fault for doing it because I apparently it sees it as two different things. So let's look at, let's find another, template great yeah that was the ticket so sorry that was my fault so it basically when you go here to the manage content when you upload it as a powerpoint presentation it views it as presentable content whereas if you put it as an attachment unfortunately then it, it will remain as an attachment that's something actually i just learned myself that it needs to be one or the other but once if you but the fact that i i know i've been in countless presentations where i have to jump through two different powerpoints and i hate the fact that when i'm sharing my screen people have to see me opening stuff and closing stuff and i love the fact this is actually still loading right now so i can't actually do it because unfortunately i picked a really large file but i love the fact Right now it wants to show me this one because it's loading it. I can click on, oh wait, so here we go. I'm gonna close this. So right now we're looking at this one. And so say I presented this to you and said, yeah, this is great. Let's look at our next one. Then we're gonna go to manage content. And it's showing me this one, but I want to share this one. Great. And now you'll see that it's showing us this one. So I love the fact that you can, again, like you could have multiple files, multiple stuff happening. I'll show you also in advance that you can create your polls in advance. So I'm gonna go to more. And now you won't see the Q&A section because the Q&A section only works when you're in a live meeting with people because it's a live Q&A. You need other people to actually ask you questions. But let's show you how the poll works. So I'm just going to say, you know, when should we, schedule lunch oh that's where our poll name but i'm going to put it here as our actual poll question and we're going to say 11 a.m 12 p.m etc and then i'm going to create the poll now i can create the poll but it doesn't necessarily show the poll until i'm ready for it so like i said before if i go here under manage content oh i forgot to press save that was my fault <laughs> okay let me go back to it Okay, so we'll do call this lunch, paste the question, 11 a.m., 12 p.m., and 1 p.m. How to create it. There we go. So there it is. Now I'm going to, again, show you here that basically I call this now the stage. This is the staging ground for all your material. So you'll see the attachment that I added. Now the two presentations, and right now it is showing the um, poll, but say I change my mind, I wanna show this instead. So now it's gonna show my presentation. I close out of that. Share the stage. Oh, nope, share this one, there we go. It's just, it's, sorry, I picked the largest PowerPoint that I think I own <laughs> to put in here as the example. Let's maybe pick the other one that's a bit smaller. Uh, this one here is a bit smaller. Now showing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Not sure, guys, why it's, it doesn't want me to show, but it wants to show the poll. There we go. Showing poll. 
and showing presentation. I think I just chose really large files. But again, great opportunity in advance to get all this stuff working. I'll just quickly show you before we jump into the other stuff, the whiteboard, how it looks. So again, I'm not, I don't have a stylus on me, so not going to work out very nicely. <laughs> um, hi. But same sort of thing. I, I've played, with, I think this is great. With I've had this with team members where we all kind of go crazy and we draw stuff, draw ideas, sort of do it as a sort of brain capturing opportunity. And then we base it. What's nice is then you can actually save the entire thing. And what's great is you can actually send it to OneNote. So say I'm here and I'm like, okay, we did a nice a diagram of our of our team or whatever we're doing. And then I want to save it. I can actually send it to OneNote. So here's my meeting that I had started and I can decide, okay. And then you'll see here, there's our little drawing that it added to my OneNotes meeting. Very handy, very, very handy. So I'm gonna go back to our meeting here. And I'm just going, again, so same sort of business. Now we got managed content. Now we have five things going on. We got uh, the whiteboard happening. I got the poll happening. I got two presentations happening and I got attachment happening. So. I'm going to just try to put that presentation back on to show, even though it's a very large file. There we go. I don't know how I can't be the active presenter when I'm the only person here. <laughs> Anywho, all right. So let's talk a little bit more about when the presentation's actually starting. So let's go and uh, we're not at two o'clock yet, but we're going to have this meeting and I'm going to invite someone to our meeting. So we're just going to invite George again. Hey, George. So I might just take George a little moment to come and join us, and then we'll just show how we can share the screen. There we go. If you hear that chiming in the background, that's the phone call coming through to George. Yeah, and that's... I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it. I think it's popping up behind my uh, go to meeting. Okay. But I can That's join okay. here. I can join here, me... in. Sure. Here we go. So what George did is you have also have the opportunity that if someone is in a meeting, so right now you see George, I can actually join his meeting. So if someone has a meeting going on, Depend again how they have their meetings set up in terms of their settings. There's an opportunity to say, hey, I want to join. Let's see someone who's in a meeting and I can join their meeting. But again, it depends on their settings and whether they allowed to do that. Are you in our meeting now? Yes, yeah. I'm in. I just went to the schedule with the meeting and click join. So Oh, okay. The early schedule in Outlook. Yeah. Okay, great. So now I'm going to just try share. Now, as I mentioned, we have the opportunity to share the desktop and it tells you that Everybody's gonna see everything on your screen. So you'll see around my desktop, I have like a yellow bar. And what it's telling me is that they see everything. And what's great is on the actual interface of Skype for Business, you'll see what people are seeing. Now, if this is bugging you, you can actually hide this preview, but I like it just keeps me aware of what people are seeing. You'll actually see here, this is the, the webinar material happening. And it's like a webinar within a webinar. And I can actually then decide to stop sharing. And now people don't see anything. Now I can also decide to share a window. So I have multiple files sort of going and I can make the decision like, oh, you know what? Just show my PowerPoint a screen. So again, this is this allows people to see the program. Just that one, just this one without seeing anything else. So if I end up minimizing this a little bit, they still only see PowerPoint. And if I end up closing this and doing other things, they don't actually see what I'm doing on the other screens, which is handy. Um, particularly if you have multiple screens and say you're doing work and presenting on one screen and then you wanna have like another screen with your notes or other files and stuff, you could have it set up that way so that you could have a fu functioning uh, screen on one side and have people only looking at the PowerPoint slide on that side. All right, I'm gonna just stop sharing this and minimize out of that. Stop sharing. Great. 
we're not going to get into it because it's a bit of a complex process. I have to admit, it's not, I wouldn't say it's the most intuitive in the world, but you do have the opportunity to co-author documents. It involves basically, you have to upload your file into your OneDrive. So you need to have a OneDrive or you need to have a SharePoint and you need to upload the file and have it accessible there on the cloud. And then once it's there, then you can actually go and grab the file and bring it in. But unfortunately, I don't have my OneDrive set up with this account. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually set up and show you guys how that, but basically what ends up happening is it, it shows up here on the screen. You have control, but any edits that are happening are actually happening in the document itself. Handy. But you could, you, again, you could do the same sort of thing really by sharing your screen and having people, you'll see is when I'm having this meeting with George, if I go into any other screen, the call itself gets minimized here at the top and then I can just share my screen and we could work on it together technically that way. All right, I'm just going to move that out of the way and get that stuff. Okay, so what other stuff? And I wanted to share you the notes. So if I click under here under shared notes, you'll see that it opens up my interface. If you've used OneNote before, you'll be familiar with this interface. And what it allows you to do is either pick a place uh, in your actual OneNote drive of where you want it to go. You can also generate a brand new. So say today we want to call this Feb webinar testing meeting notes. We'll call it notes. And we're going to put it inside of this folder and click OK. So you'll see here it's automatically generated the page within the OneNote. It's added any files that we that I had uploaded into the meeting in advance, it will post it inside of this page within OneNote and say I were typing notes. So, you know, George needs to get me files or whatever the case is. I type in all my notes, which is great, blah, 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 all my notes. I love the fact that it also keeps track of who the participants are. So attendance is done for you. There's little clicky boxes and everything that you can do to do that. Great feature. Now you have some ways of actually sharing this. So people can, within OneNote, again, we're not going to make this a OneNote webinar, you have the opportunity to go and share this page with people, then file and share. Now, what I love the fact is if it was part of a meeting, there's an option here to share with meeting. So what that does is it, if your meeting was actually scheduled in the Outlook calendar, it will find it. Now, again, we didn't have one, but if it was, it would look for it and you could click it and it would attach this notes to the meeting. How cool is that? Now, in this case, so I'm not gonna just get out of OneNote for a second, and but I can actually share my notes with George right now. So say he's here and we're in our meeting. Once I've opened up my notes, it's also part of the meeting. So I can set it up here that George can actually go in here to the notes area. Now I can decide to remove them and or hide them so he can't see them. But as long as they're available here, George can actually click on this and see the notes himself within the actual meeting. And then all that gets saved within uh, the actual meeting uh, conversation within their Skype for meeting. So hope that makes sense, but there's basically multiple ways that stuff gets saved and it's really a one click solution to access those files. I'm just gonna end this meeting with George, bye. And I'm gonna close that off and close that conversation, great. All right, we're coming close to the end of the hour. Just gonna make sure we have enough time for questions. Okay, it looks like we have a question, at least one here, let me pull that up, from Audra. She wants to know how does she delete conversations? So a couple things, Audra, we'll show you that. Yeah, right there, Melanie's going in and you can see your conversation history, right click and delete. Now, normally um, we don't really need to manage that. The space that the conversations are taking up is on the Microsoft Skype for Business server. It's not on one of your local servers taking up space. Uh, so you have all the conversation history, which comes in handy from time to time. But if you did want to completely remove a conversation, you can just go find it in your conversation history, right click on it and hit delete. So uh, that should uh, should take care of it for you. And then uh, just a couple of things. That was the uh, only question. We have some more coming in. But one thing I did want to say is there's a lot of stuff that we just showed with Skype for Business. It may look a little bit overwhelming at first, but my suggestion is just start out simple. Load it up. 
for you and your team and who you want to communicate with and just start doing some instant messaging, which is really fast and easy. Then you can just, while you have a conversation going, you can click the uh, call button and now you can be working on your computer, just talking and your speakers and microphone are, uh, are working and everybody can communicate uh, verbally. Then later you could start adding some video and then once a couple people are used to it, do a test meeting and, uh, and see how you can share a, a PowerPoint or whatever document you may want to present and just kind of add it on slowly. It's, uh, it's actually a pretty simple program. looks a little bit overwhelming when you see it all at, at first. So, okay, the next question from Audra as well, she wants to know is if everything is connected to Outlook, where else might something disappear from? So in Outlook, Melanie probably can't show it yet, but in Outlook, there is a folder that the conversations are stored in as well since it's all integrated and it's just called um, conversation history i believe it is and uh, so you can also see the conversations in outlook and search for them that you've had with other other staff members and people on on skype for business so if you delete it from the skype conversation window like we showed it's going to delete it from outlook so that's that's where it's at so hopefully that answers the question and I don't see any more questions. If uh, there aren't any more, I, I want to just let everybody know the next webinar will be the third Thursday of March, March 15th, and that will be on Excel. So we're going to have some great tips and tricks, kind of like we did with Word and PowerPoint. Uh, people have used Excel for years, and they, we find that they kind of use the same thing over and over, and Microsoft's been adding hundreds and hundreds of cool features that most people don't know about. So we're going to go through and show some of those nice little tips and tricks that you might be able to add into your uh, Excel capabilities for, uh, for working with that program. So with that, we will go ahead and close the webinar. Thanks so much, Melanie. Thanks, everybody.